question you guys remember that the erosion took place i put this duct seal over it to prevent that wire from happening but getting this out of here and in is not going to be an easy task so if you've ever wondered how an underground meter gets replaced because of corrosion damage from rust and runoff water and which is rain which is what the problem is with this meter that deck trim right above where this meter is when it rains it drips directly on top of the meter right here so you get excess uh, runoff water on top of this enclosure here and i want to guess that this meter i want to say maybe put in the mid 90s that would be my guess and that's just a guess nothing stamped on there uh, but there was a lot of corrosion mostly on the line side conductors from the utility which are the ones which are the conductors that i'm disattaching now and so i asked for a direct uh, exact replacement of this enclosure and i got that however this particular meter is actually 30 inches tall uh, the, the the width is still the same and the depth but this is a 30 inch tall meter and the one the new one i got was 32 inches so these underground the underground supply right here the line side the 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 conductors that you see hand on my left hand side of me there those wound up being two inches too short to go into the new lugs on the meter replacement so what do you do you need to extend those lugs so i had to abruptly leave this job go pick up the lugs go get um, some a splice kit with the split bolt connectors which you'll see me in a second here putting those together just to extend the conductors to the line side connections of this underground meter before I did all that, the, the load side, which actually goes to a 400 amp um, automatic transfer switch, a Generac generator automatic transfer switch. And there you see, that was a lot of work just getting that off of there. But getting the new one in is actually harder. Anyhow, uh, the load side fit into the new terminals, no problem. They, they reached, so uh, I didn't have to extend those, but I did have to extend the line side. So getting into doing this work, the JCPNL utility company is a part of First Energy Group, and I think they extend through Pennsylvania and even Ohio. I'm not sure everywhere, but they're here in JC, JCPNL. That's their parent company. Anyhow, to be able to do this work, I needed to secure a work permit from the town, which my state license affords me to get, which is not a problem. I get the light, I get the permit, and then I got to call JCPNL and get what's known as a DR number. And when using this duct seal, you gotta make sure that this stuff is rated for the outdoor use, right? So this is waterproof and vapor proof. Indoor, outdoor. It's gotta be ready for outdoors. If you're using it outdoors. So once I get the DR number, now I can go ahead and get the account number from the property here because JCPNL is gonna need it to be able to process the DR number and the shutdown and reconnection. Uh, there's also a $213 fee to have this work done, to have a JCPNL line crew come out, disconnect the power, have me do the meter, and then come back at the end of the day to re-energize the service. And so in their handout, their book uh, that is available, you'll see a link to it in the description of this video for JCPNL. It specifically, specifically states that a licensed electrician or any electrician is not allowed to work or replace or disconnect an underground meter, which if you saw in my last video was very dangerous. I probably will not be doing that again. Um, I just took the risk that day. I got it done and I don't want to do it ever again. But also JCPNL does not allow for it. So don't do it if you're thinking about doing it because you saw me do it. Anyway. Once JCPNL receives that $213 fee, which uh, seems to be a pain in the neck because I actually had my customer have to call them with the account number in order to get this done and scheduled. The catch is once the work is scheduled, you also got to have the electrical inspector from the town come out and approve the work before, giving, before he can uh give me give the the utility company what's known as a cutting card jcpnl will not re-energize this service after the repair has been made unless the work has been approved and they receive a cutting card once they have that cutting card that's the okay from the inspector in town that the work was done 
to code and it's safe to re-energize the service. However, here's the biggest hook of all. So I try to plan all this and coordinate everything to get this work done. And I find out that in the winter time, this is in March, that the inspections in this town are only on Saturdays, which makes sense because this is a summer town and there's probably not much going on during the week. I'm not exactly sure why it's only on Saturdays. That's just speculation. So I called the to speak or leave a message with the electrical inspector and he called me back pretty quickly actually. And uh, we spoke and I told him of my situation and he asked me to come down on Saturday morning to ask me about the work that I was doing. And he actually gave me the cutting card so I can get this work done. So I can give JCPNL the cutting card and have them re-energize the service without any lapse in service. So it's not a day or two in between work um, that the power might have been down. They do have a standby generator here. It's a 400 amp uh, disconnect you see right beside me on the right hand side there. But there was some kind of error and the generator never started when the power went out. So maybe that's a good thing because that diesel generator, I'm sorry, that natural gas generator is very loud. And, uh, but it never came on and now they can have it serviced. So when they actually really do lose power again, the generator will kick on. And so that's why, uh, that's the story of this particular job. It was a lot of I's to dot and T's to cross, uh, but it got done. As you can see here, I've extended the line side conductors because they were short, because like I said, the, the guts, uh, the, the enclosure is actually two inches longer than the previous enclosure that was there for the meter. So I'm using split bolt connectors with plenty of penetrox and then uh, <clears throat> we tighten down these lugs and then pretty soon here this job will be all set. I want to say these were 350 KC mil aluminum line size conductors and I believe it's similar for the copper. I don't know the equivalent right off hand of the 350 KC mil for copper or from aluminum to copper. But uh, <clears throat> one thing I could tell you is when you buy this meter assembly, the lugs on the load side don't come with the meter. So make sure you bring them. Sometimes people want to put in uh, dual terminals here or double terminals for, for two 200 amp panels. But in this particular case, it was just uh, these single conductors that goes that feeds the automatic transfer switch. And so there you go. Button it back up. All in all, this work probably took me about three and a half hours, including the time to the supply house to get the lugs that I needed and the split bolt connectors to make my final terminations on the line side. Later on in the day, I was not there, but the JCPNL crew came back and there was somebody else that met them at the, at the house here to make sure the power was restored. Guys, I'm coming up on 20,000 video, 20,000 subscribers. Thanks for liking this video, subscribing, hit that notification bell. And as always, we'll see you on the next one. Thanks for watching. Thanks for watching this video. Be sure to subscribe and we'll see you on the next one.